written with a presentation and uh, introduce myself. So as uh, Steve said, I'm working with Java since 1995. I'm a freelancer and uh, I really like uh, Java. I actually started with, um, I started with uh, Swing and then um, my, my and, and servlets at the same time. And then most of my time I spend on the server but uh, more and more time, or more and more time, sometimes I will have to have something to do on the desktop. And uh, so I, I had some uh, several, or not several, several Java X projects. And um, yeah, and um, and then Afterburner happened, and why I would like to explain during the session. Um, so I write a blog, which is uh, more or less a notepad. So blog Adam Beans are just not to forget things. I write uh, short posts. From time to time, I spend some time on um, Air, um, Airport Munich, and um, as I would say three to four times a year with various um, Java and Java E related workshops. And uh, and there were lots of people from USA actually, so which is amazing. And if you like to uh, keep up with the meta stuff, like such events, subscribe to the uh, mailing lists. Uh, this is um, airhex.news. It's just mailing lists. I I post probably once a month. And airhex.io are online courses. Nothing about Java VIX yet. Um, it's just uh, microservices, Java E, and uh, the usual suspects. Okay. If you have questions, don't hesitate and please ask questions. I really like questions. And you can reach me uh, via, via Twitter. Um, I'll show you in a second. So, in via Twitter, my Twitter is um, Adam Bean. You can also use the uh, night hacking hashtags. So I, I should uh, see this. And what you can also do, you can use the um, the free note uh, chat if you prefer. And the uh, the channel name is Air Hacks. So you can do this, or you, yeah, this would be, uh, I think, the best. Okay, uh, or of course Skype. This would be the, the best possible solution because um, yeah, this is more personal, you know, one to one. So AXTV is uh, is something interesting. So to um, I get way too many emails uh, with questions uh, regarding Java Fix, Java E, and Java. And I couldn't handle to answering the emails. So what I did instead, or what I do instead, is this two two years already. The first Monday of the month at 6 p.m. I'm streaming right now. The same actually, the same experience and answering uh, questions. So you can ask me the questions before the show using uh, GitHub Gists, and I will try to answer them. And there are already several questions on, about Java Fix. Usually, most of the questions are around Java E. And they are the online workshops, some books um, not related with uh, Java, Java FX, and there are my online courses, and this is the last slide. So now we can focus on content and uh, the marketing stuff is over. Very good, so we can kill Keynote. So I see here, this is my dashboard. So I will see your questions here live, hopefully. And now uh, to, um, to Afterburner. So, what is the history or why I created this and uh, what is it? This this is probably what we should start and um, I would draw a little bit, but I would like to show you first the GitHub page of Afterburner and today or yesterday, it depends on, it depends on the time zone. Afterburner um, 170 came out, which is a big release and a small release. It Dep really depends whether um, um, you are a power Afterburner user or just a starter. So, um, so what Afterburner is, is a somehow popular um, framework. It is on my GitHub account. It got 137 stars, which is amazing because there are actually just four classes. And how it started. So Java, in one point of time, um, Java VIX came with um, FXML support. So what FXML is, is the um, ability to create your views or define your views in an XML file. And uh, first, um, okay, to start with, I don't like XML a lot. So I try to avoid XML whenever I could in the enterprise Java space. So I always generated um, uh, FXML never, or FXML XML never created by hand. And as Java VIX came out with um, FXML support, it was a little bit odd for me. So again, um, XML, this is the same old story, but, it was a little bit different. So um, what JavaFX actually does, this um, the XML is like optional configuration of a factory, 
which creates and defines a view. So the idea of this uh, FXML is this is uh, actually a builder pattern which can be configured by XML file called FXML. And um, so what you get back, you get something like, not something, you get uh, back um, a node or parent, which is uh, similar to a J panel in Swing. And you could use FXML or not. So, and then as I got it, so, okay, this is actually a really nice idea. So we can now uh, define everything in XML and uh, change it and we get a panel back. So um, before JavaFX, uh, we used um, the uh, a lot of NetBeans with the GUI, bu GUI builder for Swing, and the problem in NetBeans and the GUI builder was that um, the code was generated and you had to put your business or presentation logic into into the uh, predefined predefined tags, and the problem was of course um, if um, if you had to change the UI sometimes uh, the code. Uh, uh, got broken and uh, and this was not a really nice experience so on javafix of the uh, on the other side it is impossible actually to put business logic to the xml so which might, which makes it kind of interesting the problem i got is or the question i got to oracle was um, i actually opened some issues so how big the fxml is supposed to be is it one app so should i define one huge file with the all the application or is it more like one FXML per view? And then the next question is, you know, what is view? Um, where to put the presentation logic? Um, how to load the FXML files? What are the names of the FXML files? And then I thought, okay, I, I just don't like to think about this over and over again. And I would like to create um, uh, some conventions. And this is actually the afterburner. So the um, afterburner are just conventions around creating something which um, loads FXML files instantiates the views, handles the presenters, and, 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 and holds everything together. Okay, I would just... Um, any questions so far? No questions? No news are, are good news, so nothing on Twitter. Perfect. Okay, so Afterburner is, um, is a Maven project. Perfect. And you have also no question, Steve. Air Hex and um, after Burner FX is the um, is the ID. And what you get, you get basically the four classes I checked out from from the um, uh, from from GitHub. So um, I open the issue and ask Oracle, okay, if we get one FXML, one big FXML file. You know, how we can handle multiple presenters. So how to define multiple controllers and presenters within the FXML file. And the answer was, uh, it is impossible. There is one-to-one -one relation between the um, FXML file and the presenter. So, okay, if there is a one-to-one -one, uh, relation between the FXML and presenter, what we can say is, um, if you have a view in the application, each view needs an FXML. And then I will draw a little bit to uh, make it a little bit more visual and hope it is easier to understand. So where are we now is the following. So what we have is um, we have a view which is in Java FX, basically a node. And, then, um, and this view is created by FXML. So of course this node can be a whole app or can be just a tab. So if you have a tab in your app, and within the tab there is a view, so this could be a node, or the whole app could be a node. If you have a full app, so okay, button, the whole app could be also a node. So what well then, well then I thought, okay, but usually in business apps, in enterprise apps, it works like the following. So we have multiple tabs here, and each tabs, tab has usually something uh, specific to a use case. It implements a use case or a business process or something. Um, and um, the convention is the following. Each such a view in the app is, uh, oh, is a folder. So in uh, Afterburner, you would get a Java package. 
So this is the first convention. So each view gets a Java package with the name of the tab, like, I don't know, orders, orders or streaming or whatever. And, um, and within the pa Java package, there are always the same con uh, contents and the content is a FXML file with the name of the package usually, then a presenter. What presenter is, I will show you in a second. A presenter, a view, the FXML file, uh, CSS, which is optional, properties, which are optional. There are a view files which comprise the whole view. Um, this is the main idea. So, um, the, uh, the, 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 the leading uh, idea is the conventional of a configuration. So um, if, you, if you see a, a structure, so a, v, a, a view or an app, it should be very easy to, uh, to, to create uh, the same structure in, in Java without any further designing or thinking. So th and this is basically what Afterburner does. It enforces the structure over and over again. And amazingly, uh, it was it is it got really really popular. So actually, I created it on a weekend, and a week later, I got an email like it is it is um, it is used in some hospital in USA in Detroit or some whatever. So it was actually a little bit scary, but um, no no bad news so far, <laughs> at least not in the news, right? So um, any questions so so far? So what I didn't cover is the uh, presenter. Um, I also didn't cover what actually how the view is structured, but I, sh I will show you in a second how it actually works. No questions. So now I think what I could do, I create a simple Java fix application. By the way, I am using NetBeans as a free IDE from Oracle. It's really nice. I use it usually for um, server side stuff. And therefore, this is daily builds. And the reason why I'm using daily builds is some unrelated stuff is because it comes with great Docker support and JavaScript support, what I need in my current projects. So um, uh, the problem with daily builds is sometimes you will probably see exceptions and errors. But uh, yeah, this is what I also use in my production projects. So a new project, and I would use the Maven archetype. So what archetype is, is like a Maven wizard, and after Banner comes with like easy startup wizard, which I would like to start right now. And, and this is Igniter. And yesterday I submitted the version 194, which is the recent one in the uh, Maven repository. It could take a few hours or, or even days because it's the archetype until it's visible. But um, I just, I have it on my local machine, so it will work in my case. Um, and um, now I will have to specify the project name and the project name, how to call it, Silicon Valley Java FX user group. Oh, this is actually a nice name. Okay, finish. And what it will do, it will create an app, so a simple app. And you already see there is a dashboard, there is a light, there is a, there is a, a FXML file. And this FXML file, if we go to it and, and open it, you see it uh, looks very like the, you, you will already recognize the structure. So there is an uncle pane, which has children, and there is a flow pane with some uh, insets, and there's label and a button. So it is really readable XML, and it actually it it um, configures the builder, which um, which outputs a node, which is an uncle pane. So if I double click on the FXML file, the scene builder opens, and with the scene builder, I can define the look and feel of the app, which is really nice. So the um, the uh, main idea of um, of Afterburn, of course, is use as much as possible um, the uh, the scene builder, and I have to admit it works perfectly well in all my projects. So the separation between generated code and um, and um, and designed code or or or, or uh, implemented code works very well in Java Vix. Why? I will show you in a second. The main reason is separation of um, or inversion of control uh, because the uh, XML code calls you and you and your 
presentation and business logic does know does does not know anything about the generated fxml file okay so we have the dashboard fxml therefore we have to have the dashboard view and the interesting part the uh, views are always uh, empty so in most cases why they are empty because afterburner what afterburner does it recognizes that from the name of the dashboard view there should be a dashboard fxml loads the fxml file and creates the view what you could do of course you could override this in um, in uh, in a method so you can say i'm i don't like to load it from fxml i would like to create the view by myself but it was never necessary so far it could be a little bit uh, too too much information so therefore again any questions or at least steve will have to ask a question no questions steve is muted or steve is sleeping ah, okay but uh do you have any questions steve okay so so we have so we have the view and we have the uh the uh, presenter <coughs> and the presenter implements initializable which is fully optional so what initialize initializable is uh, you are forced to implement a method initialize which is called called by by fxml runtime so how it works behind the scenes so in stock java fx it works like the following there is a builder and the builder reads and parses the fxml file and the fxml file defines here the controller so what javafx does it parses the file finds the controller instantiates the controller and now is able to inject stuff into my controller so javafx comes with built-in dependency injection and so inversion of control and this is the main reason why it works so well and why swing code generation didn't work so well because in a swing case you generate the code and the swing code uh, or the swing code was generated by the ide and you got uh, you know the blanks where you had to fill your presentation logic so um you were dependent on the generated code in the uh, in the javafx case it is inversion of control so what it means javafx calls your code so it javafx relies on your code and uh, your code is not dependent on the generated fxml so not dependent means there's of course a, a little dependency between and the dependency are names so in my case the dashboard presenter has um, a label message and pane lightbox so what it actually means if we go back here so we have here id lightbox id message and button launch so this ids and the field names in code they have to correspond otherwise it won't work so this is the only coupling you get which is actually a really great news and uh, the method initialize is called after uh, it's called after the uh, presenter is fully initialized by the fxml runtime and the method create lines is just my public method and the method launch so we have two other methods so the question is you know who calls the methods and this is also nicely solved in javafx so i will go back here there's a method button uh, there's a button and if we go here you see on action launch and on action create lights let's see so what it basically means is that you can just uh, invoke whatever public method you have from javafx from 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 buttons checkboxes or whatever and uh, so it, it actually means a presenter is just a pojo with injected javafx components and public methods which can be called by event handlers so this is um, how presenters are defined in javafx and what what uh, afterburner introduced is 
um, the naming convention that the dashboard concept, this is the dashboard is the whole app, comprises a dashboard view, dashboard presenter, and dashboard FXML. This is so far. Now, now it should be uh, extremely clear how it works. So we are already here. So we have FXML created by the scene builder tool. Uh, the output is a, is a node. The presenter is created by you. The present, presenter gets uh, optionally, if you like, injected all the components you specified here. And you can define public methods, which are called by the event handlers automatically from Java VIX. It's not like in swing case, you have to say, you know, at um, action performed, how it's called, not uh, at action listener and uh, implement method um, action performed is no more necessary. Uh, it is the adapters are uh, provided by Java VIX, which is really nice. So, so this was the basic concept. No question so far. Nice. Okay, and the dashboard is view. Uh, the, the dashboard view is empty. Why this? Um, I the the answer is in the super class of afterburner. As you can see, what uh, what it comes this is um, three hundred lines of code, and what it basically does is it provides the conventions. Okay, very good. Oh. Yeah, uh, very good question. So um, I actually skipped that. Usually I had to you know five slides explaining why not um, why model view present and not model view controller. Um, whatever I say, say here is based on the concept called MVP pattern, which is deprecated. <laughs> MVP pattern, Martin Fowler. So if we go here, we will find a signed retirement. In 2006, 10 years ago, this pattern was retired. And we got actually two it was split into two other patterns supervising controller and passive view and this what we are doing are more or less a supervising controller this is actually the uh, the the pattern but it is still used a lot in .NET space and in javascript space uh, um, in javascript space this mvp model view presenter idea why not model view controller because in the mvc space model view controller no one actually knew how they interact and therefore, Martin Fowler, you know, 10 years ago said, okay, uh, look, uh, this MVP is just vaguely defined. What we should do, we should specify, you know, more, uh, I would say, more sharp, more more sharp uh, definition of the, we, sh we should provide more sharp definition, what actually presenter controllers and views are. And, and, and Martin Fowler did it. So what it actually means, this MVP, my presenter, is uh, extremely opinionated controller. So before Java VIX and before Afterburner, you know, all my swing projects were MVP, uh, sorry, MVC, Model View Controller, but all of my projects were completely different. You know, some projects used uh, events, the others didn't, some used interfaces, the others didn't. And I would say this MVP is everywhere similar. So someone saw Afterburner say, this is something similar we did for .NET, for instance. So um, I would say, uh, you can call it controller, uh, but if you call it MVP, it is a little bit more defined than MVC. Thank you for your question. Great question. Okay, then... Then... Uh, go ahead with uh, the FXML view and what the view does it provides it provides conventions and and loads and uses the FXML loader which is part of Java VIX to actually load the view so we got here the view and there is the, the most the most important part is get view and what it does it asks the FXML loader to return the parent and the parent is a node is something like in swing J panel or if you know Java VIX is the node and um, and in uh, JavaScript or HTML it will be something like a diff so something which can as a part of, of the whole 
Okay, nice. So we covered this. So the FXML view, and therefore, if you override get view, you can return whatever you like. So you could return, you know, your own parent, or you can you can um, add additional nodes to this parent. So you can completely you can completely uh, configure the outcome or adjust the outcome. So I can of course run the app out of the box. So this is the nice app with, uh, so I launched it. So tower in it, ready to take off. I will show you what happens behind the scenes in a second. And if you click this, now three, um, 256 small views were created and dynamically added to the view. So what happened here, uh, two, two, 256 times there was a, a sub view created, which, which uh, comprises the presenter again, the view of course, which is empty. And the uh, which was um, a little bit delayed to, to show you some uh, nice effects. Otherwise, it will be even quicker. So there, here I overridden the um, the uh, get view, and this is just a dot. Okay. And uh, why I created it because projects um, ask me, you know, what is what about the performance? So now we can test the performance. You can create as many dynamic views which are fully configured with FXML. So if you go here. This is still FXML. What you also see, there is um, within the dashboard view, there is a concept of a light, like a small light bulb. And this um, this light bulb comprises, um, uh, is, is the name light, is the package name, and it comprises the light FXML, light view, and light presenter. Always the same naming convention. Okay, so we are pretty far. What is the bootstrap process? So. The app itself is just stock Java um, JavaFX application, so there is nothing um, specific. What uh, you will usually do, you would create your first view. In my case, it's just the dashboard view. It's just this empty view is just instantiated here. Dashboard app view, new dashboard view. Then you can say app view, get view. What you get back is the node. And you pass the node to the scene. So there is nothing specific to do you, you are not dependent depending on some strange afterburner classes you only have you know to uh, instantiate the view your main view and then ask the view for the for the root component and add it to the scene and you are ready to go okay i think now the mechanics this you know the the relation between uh, the view the presenter should be clear Oh, very good. Wait a second. Question here. Okay, yeah. Okay, the question was um, that um, how to inject properties and more stuff into the presenter, how it works with Afterburner. And uh, to show you this, uh, we, um, uh, I wish I would dig a little bit deeper into the application and go to the dashboard, present, dashboard presenter. So, and what you see here, they are this at ifxml is stock JavaFX. And now we get something strange, add inject. And this add inject comes with the Java X dot inject dot inject. So um, as you can see, I reused the idea from, from Java E. So this uh, CDI. But um, it seems like what you can do in the presenter, you can inject whatever you like into the presenter. As you can see, you have a string, 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 and so forth. And even tower. And if you go to the tower, this is just stock POJO with one method post construct, which comes from Java SE. So it seems like you could even inject POJOs. So, and um, what happens behind the scenes is the following. And now, um, now you see actually the true power of Java FX, which happened by a very small accident, or I would say by a really nice Java FX design. So now please listen carefully and uh, if you have any questions, ask immediately because um, it is very simple 
but uh, I don't know, still confusing. So the if XML loader parses the XML file, instantiates whatever it finds and returns it back. What it also does, it instantiates your presenter. If the FXML loader instantiates your presenter, you have no hook, you know, to do something with the presenter because it was directly used by the FXML loader. But the cool story is what uh, FXML loader also provides is loader.setcontrollerfactory. And I think Steve Stephen even wrote a Java Magazine article about this, right, Steve? So you wrote an article also which explains the mechanics behind this, um, as I remember a few years ago. But um, what this means is what you can do you can pass to the FXML loader your own factory, which creates your classes. You said something? Okay, uh, which creates your own uh, classes. So now it becomes a little bit crazy. FXML loader finds the controller in the, in the file. Wait a second, here. Here. So if there is no uh, controller factory specified, it will create the uh, dashboard presenter with class uh, for name new instance. But if you specify your controller factory, what will happen? Um, FXML loader or JavaFX runtime will ask your controller to instantiate your presenter. And you can say, okay, this is a little bit crazy, but what I did in Afterburner, I said, okay, I will create something which I'll call injector. And the injector is able to instantiate the presenter, but now I can inject whatever I like into the presenter. So I can inject properties, uh, custom objects, POJOs, whatever I like. I could even integrate it with Java e or whatever, with JAX or S services, you know, uh, sky is the limit. And the injector, the full dependency injection from Java E, actually, uh, the basic Java E injection, are 240 lines of code. So the, the, the entire injection happens in one class with a little bit of um, reflection magic. And why I decided to, to write it by myself? Because I looked at uh, back then and Google Juice, and Google Juice would, was actually a nice idea, but the problem is what Google Juice was lacking was convention over configuration. So in the case of uh, Google Juice, I, I had to specify modules or over the place. It was really hard to conventionally um, inject something from outside. And with um, with uh, with uh, with my own injector, I can provide uh, provide whatever conventions I like. So the the, the 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 main reason to create my own dependency injection mechanism were just the conventions. And what the conventions are is. If uh, Afterburner finds a class, it will just instantiate this. So there is no XML, no properties files, nothing needed. So it's very basic injection. The next convention is whatever is injected is a singleton, which works surprisingly well for UIs. So I get several uh, requests in GitHub, you know, provide request scoped or session scoped, some, some other kinds of scoping, but no one could provide, a, I would say, a, a, a interesting use cases uh, to, to, to motivate me to implement this. And um, so this is this is how it works behind the scenes. So the injector is going to be used as a controller factory indirectly. So indirectly is there is another indirection. <laughs> the problem is if you go to uh, to the to, to to GitHub again, the afterburner became really popular. And people wanted to integrate uh, weld injection. They actually did it. Uh, weld injection, spring boot, or whatever. And um, and the problem was, of course, is uh, how to integrate something without bloating um, afterburner. And um, and uh, I also looked at weld, but weld would come with uh, many, way too many dependent uh, the, the libraries. So um, there were several branches. If you go to um, to um, Afterburner, and there is the uh, branch Top Gun, and the branch branch Top Gun 
is you know just um, whatever possible is a uh, old branch so the, the the community provided dependency injection with scope with singleton with constructor injection this is um this is the afterburn on steroids but i never used this by myself in production and what i um this is the, the first plan, branch a little bit interesting is the mobile branch it was contributed by uh, Johann Voss. Uh, he uses it internally um, in lots of projects. So it works on mobile devices and uh, even on iOS. And um, and what I did the recent release is, is the following. So the recent release provided an extension mechanism. And the extension mechanism is, um, it is based on service loader in Java. So service loader is a concept um which looks like the following if you place a file with the name com airhex afterburner injection presenter factory which is a functional interface with a single method and within the file you specify the implementation afterburner will use this to inject whatever you like so and uh, what what i did yesterday i closed all pull requests all issues because whatever the community wanted to have is now um, externalized by by an injector which can be implemented by whatever framework you like so since yesterday you can plug whatever framework you like i will still use my own because the simplest one but you could actually uh, use uh, google juice dagger i got request someone asked about spring boot so i can now integrate whatever you like i think even you could even use ejbs <laughs> as your as your components Okay, so this is the main feature of the recent release. You can look at the unit tests um, and actually implemented such a dummy controller. So I will show you how it, this debugging injection, injection, and there is the debugging injector. And what you have to do is you have to implement one method and the class is the controller class and you will have to return the class. And this is like the context with already initialized objects. And what I just did, I, I'm invoking my own injector, but I provided you no know, debug statement. So what you can do, you can set up a breakpoint and it will see exactly when Afterburner instantiates whatever. Okay, this was a really long answer to a simple Steve's uh, question, but um, I get such questions a lot. So I will use this uh, screencast also you now to explain uh, more deeply Afterburner. Says okay, so I hope this is clear. So and and now back to the to the uh, to the sample app. So now what happens behind the scene is the following: my injector finds a class, uh, a declared field which can be private or not. Tower. So okay, is the tower in the context? If not, I will use class for name new instance, instantiate the tower, then uh, put it to the context, and then inject the tower here, and then. If it um, finds the post construct annotation and it invokes the method, if there is no post construct, it won't, uh, it, it doesn't uh, uh, going to be invoked. So why pojo inject injection is necessary or, or important? So in all Java F projects so far, was the following. We had the package. And let, now imagine, or usually, you have to call a backend, a REST service, for instance. And uh, what we usually do, we we um, we encapsulate the uh, the REST communication in a POJO. And this POJO is just a testable class, so you can write unit tests or or, or system tests, whatever, to test your communication. And then the presenter gets injected this service class. So this is at inject, at inject. This is the presenter, and this is the view. And uh, Steve, uh, Steven asked me um, how to obtain the reference to the presenter, and the, 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 the answer is, yeah, just asking the view, and you get the presenter if you really need it. But what usually happens is you are working within the presenter. So now if you have a button, and you push the button, the button can call public method, uh, I don't know, fetch from server, and fetch from server goes to the service and fetches the results and uh, and sets the results to the, to the UI back. So this is why we need uh, additional support. So there are services, and uh, there's also a concept of model classes, but there is no difference between both technically. So both is POJOS. So what you can do with model, you can have one view 
and bind, bind UI to here and other view also bind stuff here and then you can co both can communicate using a model which is singleton so all injected classes are singletons i hope now it's crystal clear and, uh, and steven is uh, happy with the answer so and i got uh, a question uh dupa asked me could you just reflect on swing namespace to create that if xml this is i don't get okay he answered by herself i spit it has model view view model is that yeah model view view model is this what i what i talked and i thought this was web stuff yes but uh, before isp.net there was i think it's called wpf and this was like xml to define ui interfaces and this was native stuff yeah i hope this is clear dupa okay then we covered already i think the basic mechanics so if you have uh, questions again how how it works ask me so the same is true for the um for the strings so now what only happens i recognize hey, a string is something special and with the uh, string prefix uh, what happens then there can be um configuration properties is fully optional so if you specify the configuration pref uh, uh, properties all the keys are injectable so i can say prefix tower says happy ending check happy happy ending so um and this can be injected directly with the values to the um uh, to the presenter also what you get um you can you get uh, resource bundles loaded so this um resource bundle get string is a built-in java um, java fix mechanism there is a dashboard properties and there is um and there is the end so this is also uh um, accessible so if you run the application again run it now you see now this tower in it where it comes from because the pojo was instantiated at load time this is the output here and launch and says they tower says okay okay from tower enjoy something and this this are injected properties from tower says here for instance okay so now this package here there are typical there is um, typical contents presenter view uh, xml they belong together so this is this uh uh this trinity <laughs> presenter view and uh, dashboard they are mandatory tower is the service or model class uh, this is fully optional there's configuration properties and this are just um, resource bundle okay now interesting point there is method the create lights which creates 250 uh 56 uh views and you see how it happens there is a view new light view so it's just created and then i can say view get view async so there is a, a possibility to create views asynchronously and i got this request by uh there was a Fraun, uh, fraunhofer institute in germany they use afterburner which seems to be a huge application to control the um the power plants and they wanted to instantiate whatever possible in asynchronous way so uh, instead of you no know, uh, saying view get view it i call get view async which is an in interesting uh, java 8 piece so what happens here i'm passing the method lightbox dot get children at which is a method reference to get view async so we just look at this and this interesting part is this uh, get view async is just a consumer of parents so you can pass whatever you like which consumes a parent obviously if we if we go back um this uh, get children um is is a collection of of parents or nodes and it consumes a parent or node and what you get with that are several things first um i ask for the view here and i say some su supply as uh, supply async i i provide the uh the parent it is it is done in a in, in in a pool 
and then I'm using the FX platform executor run later so it means uh, this uh, the uh, updates on the view happens in uh, in the uh, UI thread so there is there are no inconsistencies and in exception case I'm I'm, I'm using the uh, reporter this is stock Java 8 so no no magic no external framework so um, what I really don't like are external dependencies and afterburner doesn't come with any external dependencies so at the end of the day the size of the afterburner is around I don't know 10k or something is, is a tiny framework okay this uh, asynchronous instantiate instantiation is absolutely um, uh, optional usually what happens in project at the beginning you are just using this get view and then it will block and wait until it's constructed this you can in instantiate you know so in, in my case if I just just do it again I will just run it and then as you can see um, it just creates the views 256 views with different colors so um you see usually it should be if i would create it in a row it should be from the from the from the i think darkest to the lightest one but you see this is just a random random pattern so what it actually means all the views were created randomly um yeah questions again i have question to steve but you can just answer on twitter how how much time we actually have we are almost one hour so I don't know how much how much time is scheduled. So um, you, Steve can just answer this in Twitter. Okay. So we have that. So we uh, we look at the presenter, and we created asynchronous. Um, oh wait a second, there is something. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, uh, Dupa asked me, how how come that very end string doesn't have an annotation like the rest? So the question from um, Dupa is, the very end doesn't have the annotation because it cannot be injected. It it, it is uh, used here in the resource bundle get string, and this resource bundle is passed by uh, the Java FX runtime. So this is the reason. Okay, this is the reason why it is not uh, not injected. If I would put here at inject, I would get an error because uh, whatever is in the um, in the dashboard properties as is not injected. It is provided as a resource bundle, and the resource bundle is passed by Java runtime. So thank you for the for the question. Okay, so we have uh, ten to fifteen minutes. So um, then I will show you something interesting. So of course we have to maintain three files always and write them by hand which uh, not, is not always fun therefore the community created a really nice plugin and I would like to show you and this is the um, afterburner FX plugin and I'm I'm using it um, I will just pass it to the chat so and the afterburner uh, plugin and install this is a really nice it comes is extremely well documented and is very helpful and is a minimalistic plugin but perfectly documented so to show you this let's imagine we have one package light but i would like to create darkness so i create another view called darkness and now i will have to create you know everything by hand but what i can do instead i can just go here and say new other Go here and say um, JavaFX AfterburnFX, and this comes with the from the plugin uh, file name Darkness, and as you can see, it will create Darkness FXML, Darkness Presented, Darkness View. It was really nice uh, the community uh, contribution because it just created a plugin without uh, asking me. It was just it just happened, and it just matches perfectly the convention. So it is really really nice, nice work. And now even ask me you now, would you like to have a style sheet, CSS style sheet to create the UI? Would you like to have optional uh, property file and um, optional resource file? So, yes, I would like to have everything. And then say finish. 
And now it created a presenter. It created a view, which uh, provides you even access to the real presenter. And the nice story is the plugin creates <laughs> even a Java doc, which refers to me as an author, which is not true, but it's really nice. So um, big thanks to the author. Um, the configuration properties with nice, really nicely uh, documented and the fxml file so what i can do right now i can say okay i would like to have a button and i will put the button here and the button okay just a button then a label and say this label the id is output this DID is important. So and the label has no contents. But it's large. So we have the label, we have the button, button. So and uh, what I can do in my presenter right now, I could say here at if XML label output, this has to correspond and the label has to be fxml label and then I could provide a method save and then say for instance output set text as silicon valley jfx so this and now we can go back here say my button and the action is what is it uh, save so now if I will push the button it will call the save method here so um, to activate that what I would like to do I will go to the app and say instead of using the dashboard view I would like to use the uh, darkness view it's the easiest possible thing Okay, and run it. Button, thanks for the JFX. So this was the um, the uh, an, an nice little component. So what you can also do, you can say configuration properties and say, okay, but I would like to have a configurable message is um, Steve. and say okay I just said uh, Steve in the source code sorry it will come in 30 seconds to you no problem so and now run it oh I have already too many Thanks, Steve, for the uh, uh, Silicon Valley Java JavaFX group. As you can see, it was provided by here. You can say okay, but I have a back uh, um, a, um, a service, and I will call it I don't know uh, message service. It's just a pojo which needs some initialization, init connection, and this is post construct. And then I can say private string message or uh, yeah, done. For, um, then I could also. output that so we have this and then I can say okay now inject the uh, what was it uh, message service and then I can just say here plus service dot message so run it again. 
I probably have already 15 applications running. So um, thanks you for JFX and from backend comes from the Pojo. So um, in my eyes, it's an extremely way or extremely productive way to build um, JavaFX apps quickly. What I also did, I created a larger example called Lightfish and I migrated it afterwards to Afterburner. And Lightfish is monitoring for Java application, which comprises multiple nested uh, tabs and uh, still use the um, uh, the afterburner and then simplifies a lot the structure. It provide or provides you a structure of the app, so you don't have to think twice and know how to how to uh, uh, destructure a a uh, a concept into code or how to how to provide a mapping between the concept and the code. And uh, it it is well received by the community. And um, afterburner itself comes with four classes, so it's one more than uh, then promised. Why? Because yesterday I created a functional interface presenter factory, which provides the extensibility. So this uh, just finds all the presenters. So there is a one static methods iterable, and this uh, instantiate instantiate presenter um, is the hook which you can implement. Configurator cares about the configuration, so it it reads configuration properties. Injector is covered. Conventional injection. And FXML view is the only class where the magic happens, where all the conventions are defined. And uh, I call it a framework. It is actually not worse to call it a framework. It's a small library with four classes. So this was, um, I think, the uh, most deep afterburner introduction in history. If you have questions, we can dig into deeper, into synchronous, asynchronous, or whatever you like. And this is used by a lot of projects. I don't know how many, but I get uh, more and more, you know, uh, pings from from the community. Uh, like, um, yeah, huge projects are based on Afterburner. Questions? Now I can see you as well. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Hi, Cassandra.